But anyway, I'm happy that I have a small group of team coming with me from Manipur. And first, I would like to introduce them because they are the new members for Manipur working for Adivasi Vikas Parishad. Uh, please come. I want to introduce you. Ali Darren. And, and from, from Guwahati, Come to from Manipur to come to Guwahati is not possible. So, anyway, I bring greetings from all the elders who have been our past members. They have become very old, so they could not come. They send their greetings to every one of you. And so today, as everyone has known the problem that we face in Manipur, it is all about ST status. And the non-tribal wanting to come into ST and driving us, ST, out of our place and trying to occupy the lands, the hills, and properties, and everything. And they want to become STs, and we, the business people, they want to make us as immigrants. Whereas we are the business people. Anyway, we have a lot of problems and our young people have been struggling. And I'm sure they are in the ground and they will tell the uh, ground right please. Uh, very uh, good evening to you, respected uh, leaders. Uh, I'm so sorry, I don't speak Hindi. Uh, I least speak in English in my best way, okay? Before I start, uh, I want to say, uh, show you the map, political map of Manipur, how it goes. Yeah. A map of Manipur looks like this farm, exactly like this farm. And it looks like the football stadium. The seats or the arrangements there are hill areas, which is like 90%. Only 10% barely. So, in the constitutional provisions, we have Article 371C, which is about Autonomous District Council, which also is existing in other northeastern states of the state, the country. But the ADC that is existing in Manipur is different from other northeastern ADCs because it is not put under 6th schedule of the constitution. That means the financial fundings come from the center through the state. So the state assembly directly holds everything into their hands and no development, no vigors in the tribal areas of the state. That's one, that is one part. And shortly coming to the present, Conflict of the state. Maiti community. They are majority community. They are uh, more than 55 or 55 to 60 population of the state and they are majority tribe. And they have over a, th a thousand history, long history. They have rich history. They have so much, much of development in every walks of life. You must have seen whether in sports, like football, literature, films, movies, every field. They are much, much, much ahead of us. So, this type of community having that much of development or advancement, demanding for SD status. This is not justice at all. It's injustice. So, the State High Court of Manipur asked the State Legal Assembly to send a recommendation to the center for giving SD status to this Maiti community in April 2023. So, to oppose this move of the High Court, the tribal populations of the state, like the Nagas and Kukis, they held a solidarity, tribal solidarity march on May 3rd, 
2023. But unfortunately, a very appalling, distressing development was flaring up in the, that particular area of Jural Changpur district, the epicenter of this ongoing conflict. That's, uh, that's how the present conflict emerged. This is out of the mandate demanding SD status. So, now, the Maitai people, the majority people, now killing the tribal Kuki people in hundreds. So, someone who is hating a tribal community is asking for a tribal status. This is a very serious matter. So, here in this August house, I would like to bring it to the notice of you elders, MPs, and of different sorts of leaders. I want your assistance in opposing this type of move. Otherwise, in case if they are successful in their demand in getting SD status, it won't affect not only the cookies and nagas of the state, but the tribal population of the whole country. Because it's not about only grading the tribal lands of Manipur, but it's about reservation in the government job. How well, how advanced they are. If they are given this type of status, then they will all uh, get the benefits of this reservation. Even at the cost of the tribes across the country, mainland country. This is very serious. For example, in UPSC civil service examination, all the SD status will be going to the majors. This is very simple and very clear example, a precise claim in the tribal lands of the state, like the Kuki lands. This is very serious matter. So, for the time being, the burning issue is about buffer zones. In this conflict, the central government came out with the idea of separating these two tribes, let's say, these two communities, one May days, other cookies. To separate them, they built buffer zone, which buffer different buffer zones, which are currently made by Assam Rifles, because Assam Rifles is the sentinels of northeast and also are friends of the hills. So they know best the history of the tribes in northeast India. They know how to tackle. They know how to solve solution. They know everything. Now, the center is now trying to withdraw these Assam Rifle people and replace them with uh, CRPF, maybe, or BSL. Our demand is they should not be taken away. They should stay intact. Preferred zones should stay intact. Otherwise, as you all have known, the private militia of the state chief minister and Green Singh. He has a private militia called Arambai Tengo, Meite Lipun, and other very based insurgent groups like UNLF, who, is, who has always been who has been fighting for independence since 1964. And other factions like uh, Manipur People's Army. Pripap, KYKL, there are many uh, tens of uh, mighty insurgents who are fighting for sovereignty. Or, uh, yeah, sovereignty. They are fighting for sovereignty. To bring back this Maharaja before independence, before being Manipur merged into India. So, these people will be let loose if the preferred zones are taken away. And then they will easily get into the tribal lands of the cookies and they will continue to do what they did for the last 15 months. Like raping our women. You all must have seen the paradigm of naked women. They will do the same thing. We don't want this to repeat again this time. So we ask the center to take back your decision of 
withdrawing or abrogating our sound reference or buffer zones. In case, if they really want to withdraw the Assam Rifles, 9 Assam Rifles and 22 Assam Rifles, then they have to be replaced at least by the peer army. I mean, not CRPF, not BC, BSF. I don't mean, I don't undermine the CRPF or BSF. My point is, if it is not someone who knows our history best, that's Assam Rifles, then army has to be put there. So that uh, justice will be served. Boundaries will be looked upon and no fighting or no shootout will happen if they are properly placed. So here in this August House, my respected leaders, yes, I would be happy if you could kindly do in every capacity of yours, then you come out in support of us. In this uh, coming Wednesday, we will be having organizing a press conference wherein we will devotedly speak out against this uh, this, this uh, planned program of uh, withdrawing Assam Rifles. Assam, withdrawing Assam Rifles means it implies appropriating these preferred zones. So, this Wednesday we will be having a press conference in uh, Press Club of India. And also on this uh, coming 10th August, Saturday, we will be having a full fledged protest in Jandar Mandar, both for the, uh, both against this uh, protest, against this withdrawal, and the ongoing separate administration movement. One thing I put up, I want to put up here. Separation. Separation is what is not actually what we demand. It is something already in existence since time, say, immemorial. Say, let's begin from the British time. Since the British came into Manipur and ruled Manipur, the British government divided the uh, Manipur administration into two entities. Here, very. This continued for a long time. And even after independence, the government of India has uh, done the same thing, has followed the same legacy of the British by dividing the state into two parliamentary constituencies. That is, outer Manipur, inner Manipur. So, there has always been two uh, entities or dichotomies in terms of administration in the state of Manipur. Since British time, even after independence, and even now, following this legacy, it is only the Home Minister of this country, Amit Shah Ji. He was the one who created this buffer zone, dividing the two communities into two different entities, meaning they cannot mingle anymore. They are being separated by this buffer zone. This is a legacy of what the British did and what the uh, uh, constitution of the country has done. My respect to our beloved uh, Ambedkarji. So, it is not only about Vegas. It's not about only development, if I'm not mistaken, the meaning of Vegas. It's only, it's also about our existence. For this existence to ensure our, exi our existence, you should come out help me as a fellow tribal to attend our demand for separate administration in the form of nothing less than UTV legislature. This is our demand. Okay, thank you. This much is my presentation. for separation of separate, separate administration for tribal to be self ruled like we have initiated during the Guria committee for the Jharkhand uh, state for everything and then uh, initiating the Jharkhand movement and also Uttarakhand and different different states in the same manner 
we like to require our August uh, uh, here that even a separate administration be given to the cookies in Manipur. So, and jointly only we can fulfill that. Only pride from Manipur alone will not be done. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Madam, Madam Maria. Thank you, and gentlemen. Uh, we have heard you in detail, and I would request both of you and entire team of Manipur that you keep us in writing, not in detail, but keep us in writing with summary so that we will take up this issue with the government of India and we will request to all honorable members of parliament of our community to take up this issue with the floor of parliament so that something will come out, positive will come out.